tell me about Act 3 a little bit. Uh, you know, it's your, it's your third release. It's called Life and Death. It touched a little bit on the, uh, the aspects of Life and Death in the song, right? I mean, what would you say, I mean, how would you describe the song in terms of the two releases? I guess just uh, not necessarily like more pop oriented, but more to the point. It's like it's there's less fat, and I think that Act Two we cut out a lot of the fat, but this one is just much more to the point. It's much more. Um, I don't want to say more mature because I don't feel like it's my place to say it's more mature, but I think it came from a more mature frame of mind, and and having played. Uh, you know the songs and felt it out with Act Two what styles and types of songs we liked. You know what styles I really ended up liking. Like songs like Evicted, I don't like. Really? It, yeah, I don't. It's just so I knew I never wanted to make another song like that. <laughs> songs like Red Hands, I didn't like. So I, ne I knew I never wanted to make another song like Red Hands. But then there's songs like Recession or um, Bittersweet that I was like proud of, and I was like thinking that it might be nice to explore that side of things. And it's not that I hate Red Hands or anything like that, but it's after playing it for that long, I knew I never wanted to write something like it, you know? Right. Um, which is why even tonight when we played Red Hands, it was a totally different arrangement of the song. Um, it sounded good. Yeah, I have fun. So, sweet. So, um, now, if I can ask you, I know you touched about this on blogs a little bit, but I, I mean, it's worth asking again. You, uh, your last shows with Trios, uh, with Bose and Rhode Island stuff. Uh, just briefly, I mean, share a little bit about your experience with that, and I guess, you know, how you felt about that. So, um, I think uh, for me, it was. Uh, I mean, I, I can't, I can't really make the assumption that it was any more important to me than it was to them. Right. But when I was let go from the band I never knew I played my last show you know so for me it felt like I never got to play a last show right. and so to have my last show be their last show and yeah. for it to like it, it, uh, aside from feeling really grateful that I they had wanted to include me in something that is another milestone in a band's career you know closing the book on a band Right. The fact that they wanted to include me, like in my own selfish little world, it was like I finally felt like I got to play my last show. With them. So, yeah, and that was, you know, it was special. And obviously, it was so powerful for me that it, like, any grudge that I would have felt at all, any grudge they would have felt, just dropped immediately. And that's why, I mean, Andrew is our, is our manager, right? And Nate's in the band. And uh, I think that it's going to come full circle. In yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll all be in the band. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, it was really, uh, it was just, there, I don't know, I don't really, I never experienced anything to compare it to. It seemed like you were really enjoying it. Yes, yeah, we all were, and it was, it was, it was even more painful because of how amazing it felt. Right. If it was like, I've seen some bands, I've seen bands have the last show, their last shows, not really notable bands, but I've seen bands play their last shows, and sometimes it just seems like they're doing the motions they're going and they hate each other, each other. Yeah. but these guys still genuinely loved each other and so it was like a really powerful and really positive thing um, I remember watching the footage from Epilogue and it just looked like you guys were so into it yeah, it was rough that was like try, when, when, I mean, you, the, the when you get choked up song, like literally yeah. getting choked up and not being able to sing Right. Because you're choked up, then it's like, and then you hear Brendan, and Brendan can't sing, and you hear Alex, and Alex can't sing, and so you're looking around at each other, and it's kind of funny, but at the same time, it's like, it's just surreal. It's, I, I mean, there's really nothing I can compare it to. That's neat. Well, last question: um, If people pre-order Act Three, they can get a uh, illustrated booklet that depicts everything that's happened in Act Two. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about, and uh, how did that sort of get started? Well, I originally wrote it before Act Two came out, and I had an artist. Who was working on it and I had a publishing deal in line and then I had a manager come in and tell me that I shouldn't go with the publishing deal and he could get a better one but uh, he never did and the, the publishing company that originally had a deal on the table they folded one day they got uh, absorbed by another company or they got bought out by another company so it was uh, that that company that released um, was it Revolution on Canvas is that Whatever. That's, that's the poetry book. That's the one? With yeah. Like poetry and art from different band members? Yeah, Bear Bear Shug all out. Yeah. yeah. Um, that same company, I think they were, I forget what they were called, but that company 
was willing to give me a deal, and it wasn't like they were going to give me money, but they would release a book, and uh, so it got shelved, and then I decided, like, probably a year ago that I was going to just pay for it to make it myself, you know, make it on my own, and uh, pay this artist, Ken St. John, to do all the line work, and then um, this um, guy, Glenn, at We Are Synapse, did all the coloring and all the layout, and... Uh, they also designed your MySpace. Designer yeah. MySpace did all of our record artwork. Yeah. Um, they just do, they do a lot. Actually, I, like, I love those guys, but, so I did it, and then, when we were trying to figure out, you know, we wanted to do something special with the release, and, um, Andrew asked me if we wanted to put the book out, and we wanted to actually do it as a full hardcover book, but, um, Fred said he just, Fred at Triple Crown said he wouldn't put it, it just wasn't feasible, you know, it's too expensive and it would have been so expensive that people would have had to be charged, you know, people would be spending $40 on a, on a pre-order CD, that's not, that's not worth it, so eventually, you know, so we just, now it's a part of the special release as a 32 page book. Yeah. Thank you Casey, appreciate it. Yeah, alright, Act 3 coming out soon, what is, what is it? Uh, October 32nd. Buy it. Please. Sweet. Thank you, sir.